It's another fine morning here on day, who knows, of the apocalypse. So what I'm going to do for you guys today is we have an 08 Toyota 4 and I'm going to walk you through a transmission service on this. Now for this particular one, it's going to be a little bit different because of the fact that you don't actually have a dipstick tube or a dipstick itself for checking the fluid level. So what we're going to have to do is it's all going to be based off of temperature and you're going to have to be messing with the overflow drain plug to actually set the transmission fluid level. So I'm actually going to go ahead and walk you guys through this procedure. It's not too bad, but that will kind of give you a better idea if you haven't ever experienced this before. So let's go ahead and get started. All right. So first thing you're going to want to do is, well, if you're in a shop environment, obviously you want to lift up the vehicle. If you're working on this at home, you want to make sure the vehicle is actually on a level surface and our driveway is pretty slanted here, so I opted for using drive-on ramps instead of actually using uh, like your typical floor jack and jack stand. That's because you don't want to have to, you don't want to risk the jack stand actually tipping over because of the fact that the the uh, the driveway is at an angle. So drive-on ramps are a much better option. Now these particular ones, uh, these are some home-built ones I made out of some 2x12s. Now the inside of them is hollow to help reduce weight, but man, they're still pretty heavy. I think they're like 70 pounds each, but Either way, the goal of this is to keep the vehicle on an actual level surface. That way, whenever you're doing your final transmission fluid level, uh, whenever you're setting the final transmission fluid level, um, it's actually going to be accurate versus being on an incline on that. So just something to consider. So one more thing I forgot to mention too, anytime you're using drive-on ramps, you actually want to make sure that you go ahead and chalk the wheels on here. Now in reality, because of the fact that the driveway is slanted down, uh, you should really only need to use the front chalk right here on both sides you can see over there that far wheel is also chalked on there but i didn't want to take any chances i'm using both of them on both the rear wheels so just something you need to uh, consider because you don't want that vehicle moving on you okay so right now we're underneath the vehicle and i'm going to kind of walk you through what you normally do during just a typical drain and fill but we're actually and what i'm actually going to do on this vehicle is I'm actually going to flush the transmission fluid out just because it's got around 130, 140,000 miles and I don't know the state of the transmission fluid and in reality it should have been serviced at 100,000 miles so the fluid condition probably isn't too great but what we're looking at here is, I'll point to it, as you can see this is the, again we're on the bottom of the vehicle looking up at the transmission pan, the sump, and you can see there's actually two drain plugs right here. Now on this particular vehicle, remember there's no actual dipstick that normally, so there's a tube that normally runs in from the top, comes down into here, and that's where you normally check your transmission fluid level. It's easy, you, you know, you fill, that's where you also fill it up from, from the top through the dipstick tube. Um, and then you normally put the transmission park or neutral, you know, get it up to temperature, check the final fluid level when it's on a, uh, when the vehicle's on a level surface and you're good to go. Pretty simple. Well, whenever you're dealing with something like this, uh, it's going to take a little bit more time because now on this particular vehicle, we have what's known as an overflow plug right there. That's where we actually set our final fluid level. And then right here is our drain plug to where we, again, drain out as much transmission fluid as possible. Now, you guys know during a normal drain and fill, uh, typically you're only going to drain about like, I'd say around three quarts, maybe four out of the transmission. And again, again it depends on if it's a rear wheel drive configured uh, vehicle, front wheel drive, all wheel drive, um, to determine how much fluid actually comes out of there. It's all based off the transmission design. Now, on this one, Whenever you pull the drain plug out for a normal service, you want to loosen this drain plug, take it out, and then again, only about three, maybe four quarts is going to drain out because the majority of the fluid is going to be, well, remember what's just behind this front bell housing right here is the torque converter assembly. That's going to hold a lot of your fluid as well as your other transmission components, your internal components, your various valves, uh, your actuator, your clutch packs, uh, holding application devices, your accumulators are going to uh, have a little bit of fluid in there. So again, only a partial amount of fluid is going to be able to drain out of here. So again, like just like your typical oil change, pull the drain plug out, let it drain until it comes out to basically a trickle, reinstall it, torque it down. Remember, always replace, I don't know how well it's showing up in this video, but remember there is a, a crush gasket or crush washer behind this. You want to replace that. Remember, worst case scenario, um, if you don't have a replacement, yeah, sometimes you can get away with reusing it one more time. But again, in reality, whenever you're quoting these for the customer, they're coming in for a service, you should always replace those crush washers. So that's the first thing you would do is pull this drain plug out, let it drain, 
reinstall it, torque it down, new crush washer, you're good to go. So from that point, this would be done. Now this right here, this overflow plug, that's going to be pulled out whenever you get the transmission up to operating temperature. So the way it works on this particular vehicle is the operating temperature range is between whenever you set the final fluid level, this is the plug you're going to remove whenever you get to that part. And again, I'm going to actually show you that process coming up pretty soon. But basically you want to get the temperature between uh, 97 to 115 degrees Fahrenheit, the transmission temperature, because remember um, what happens to fluid whenever you heat it up for the most part. The majority of the time, well, the fluid is going to want to expand. So that's what's happening in the transmission pan is you have this level and whenever the fluid starts heating up, well, the level's actually going to rise. And so up in there, you have a little overflow tube that kind of sticks up and the fluid will get to a point to where it rises above that little tube and starts kind of coming out through here. So they want you to be within a particular operating range before you actually remove this overflow plug. And it's as simple as undoing it, letting it drain until it slows to a trickle. And then once it kind of slow, it's never going to stop completely. And that's because the transmission fluid's always heating up and expanding. So, and, and you'll get a better idea whenever I actually remove this plug later on. So that's going to be where you actually set your final fluid level is from this uh, overflow plug right here. Now on some transmissions, they may, they may only have one plug to that for the actual uh, servicing and setting the fluid level. Again, it depends on the manufacturer. So always look up the recommended procedure, how they want you to actually do it. Now on this particular one, well, how do we fill the transmission fluid? Well, you can have an adapter that comes in through the top and it kind of hooks over and pumps in the fluid from there. So manufacturers, you have to do it that way. Well, on this particular one, if we go back here and let me get my awesome pointer slash pry bar tool. So here I have the light shining here. We're looking at the uh, extension housing, and the tail shaft housing where the draft shaft again slides into the output shaft of the transmission. Well, if we look right here, here's our actual fill plug right there. So this is a, I believe it's a 24 mil uh, hex head. You just undo that. You put your fill tube in through the side there. Uh, some of them have a special adapter that threads into the side there. That's where you're actually gonna pump and fill up the transmission fluid from the side there. So that's gonna be my point where I'm actually accessing the fluid. On this particular one, since we're gonna flush the transmission, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move up here so y'all can see. See these lines coming off the transmission? These are going to be a lot of times your cooling lines. Now on this particular vehicle, this doesn't have a tow package. Now what that means is if your vehicle is equipped with a tow package, it's oftentimes you'll have a uh, an external oil cooler usually bolted on the front of the vehicle to get the maximum cooling capabilities. On this one, they just have a basic cooling uh, it's it's the one where it has an internal cooler built into the radiator itself, so it's going to do okay. But anything that's worth uh, any sort of extra or additional strain you're putting on the vehicle, what you want to do is you want to have a heavy duty cooler that can kind of help dissipate that heat that's building up again in the transmission. But for a transmission flush, uh, you're going to get access to these lines right here, and you're going to get to a point where you either um, unscrew it like at these connection points right here. Although I always like to avoid uh, messing with any threaded connection just because of the fact that some of these are a pain to remove. They're pretty tight on there and you don't want to mess up the, the threads on there either. But what I do is I actually follow this up and usually there's some flexible lines that you get to and there's some hose clamps you take off. So that's actually what I'm going to go to next to show you all. Okay, so here we are. We're at the front of the vehicle and here are those flexible rubber lines that I was telling you about. And again, the reason why they have those is because of the engine and transmission. Well, the torque for them is going to cause them to twist and you have natural vibrations. You don't have a solid connection everywhere. So that's going to allow for some flexibility and that way you don't have to worry about shearing any of those hoses off. So you can see here we have a hose right here and a hose right there. One of them is going to be your output line, which is going to go to the cooler. Now, if we follow this up here and I'll get my light so y'all can see a bit better. Let's see if y'all can see. Uh, it's kind of hard to see on this, but basically those hoses are going to go into the radiator and the radiator has a built-in internal cooler on the side. Now some of them are mounted on the bottom. In this case, this one kind of comes up 
and goes into the side of the transmission. There's a little built-in transmission cooler on there. And again, it does okay, but any sort of heavy-duty uh, towing applications, you're gonna want an external cooler. Now, something to be aware of, what I'm gonna do, let me put my light under here. Be careful whenever you actually, so these are the points right here, these hose clamps, that you're gonna remove, whether you're actually doing a flush by uh, the, the kettle rig method, by actually uh, having the fluid drain into a bucket or catch can, or if you're actually hooking up a machine, you wanna make sure and you're actually disconnecting the correct lines, because if you're not careful, you may think that this line right here is coming from your transmission, because if you're just sort of looking at it, uh, you want to be sure that these lines are actually running from the transmission itself because a lot of like their power steering lines can kind of look similar. So just make, sh make sure you're actually undoing the correct connection before you do that. So if, if you've never used a transmission flush machine, it's very, very simple. You just undo one of these lines right here and the transmission, um, I may draw a picture later to kind of explain, but basically you undo this connection and this rubber hose right here, you'd hook up to one part of the machine, the fluid's gonna run through the machine itself, cycle it out, and then it's gonna return back to this line right here. And that's usually where, it's just plug and play at that point. You hook up this to the machine, you pour in how much fluid you wanna exchange, and it's gonna do all that. The, the transmission pump itself on the vehicles was actually cycling the fluid uh, through the machine, and the machine is gonna kind of exchange the old fluid for the new and put back, ideally, the same amount that comes out of the vehicle. Now, a lot of those machines are, I would be careful and use them a couple times before you trust them completely, because what can happen is it may not put exactly as much fluid back into the system as it took out, so you're gonna have a mismatch level. So it's one of those things to where, like if you're doing an oil change, it doesn't matter how many times you do it, you always wanna inspect the final level. Well, that's definitely, that's especially true for this vehicle, well, for two things. For one, the machine, you never can quite exactly trust how much fluid it's putting back into there. So you really should jump, double check your fluid level after that. And then also, uh, something to consider is, um, oh, you're assuming that the, the fluid level in the transmission was already set correctly before it came to the shop. So again, you never know whether somebody's been working on the transmission before. So that's another thing. You always wanna go back to that drain plug in the back over there. And again, we're gonna go uh, oh wait, we're looking at the oil pan, just kidding. Don't take that drain plug out. But yeah, further back there, again, we'll walk back there after this procedure. Um, after we flush the transmission out, that's where you wanna pull that overflow plug out whenever it's within the proper operating temperature range. And that's where you wanna set and double check your final fluid level to make sure everything's done correctly. So what I'm gonna show you is a way to do it before you actually had access to those uh, nicer flush machines. And again, this will do the job properly, but there is a way you have to, you have to be careful when you do this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull one of these hoses off. Now I'm not sure which one's gonna be the pressure and uh, which side's gonna be the pressure. So what I mean is if you undo this hose, we don't know if fluid's gonna come out of that flexible side or the hard side. So you'll see the setup I have on there and a quick way to determine which way is the correct one to pay attention to. All right, let me go ahead and explain this setup here. So what I've done is, this is our hose coming from the transmission, right here, that flexible line. I've just moved that clamp back, uh, pulled the hose off from this solid line right here. And what I've done is I'm pointing this down towards a little catch pan at the bottom. And then what I've also done is I've hooked up, this is just a spare hose I have, I'm hooking up to this metal line and also having it to where it's pointing down towards this little catch pan right here. Now. Also, if you're having trouble pulling these hoses off, if y'all haven't had one of the, if you if y'all don't have a right angle pick tool like this, I highly recommend it. These aren't very, these are pretty inexpensive. What they do is it breaks the seal between the hose and the metal line. Invaluable tool. I've seen the uh, I've seen the ones where they're like uh, these little needle nose pliers like these, but they have like a little uh, circular end on there. And what that does is help break the seal. All, oftentimes what I see is that actual hose gets damaged from that. So what I recommend is that right angle pick tool to kind of break that seal in between the metal line and the rubber hose. Um, you, there's less risk of it actually being damaged. So what I'm gonna do is hop in the vehicle. And what you're gonna see is when I start this up, what this is gonna determine is which one's gonna be my pressure line. Let me wait for this truck to go by. Damn, that FedEx truck is moving. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this camera up to where I'm gonna hop in the vehicle, I'm gonna start it up, and what this is gonna tell me is which one of these lines is gonna be our, uh, which is gonna be our supply line from the transmission. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys. 
Okay, so right now I have the camera set up. We're looking at both our lines right here. I'm gonna run the vehicle real quick, start it up. This is gonna be in real time. I'm gonna quickly see which one of these hoses uh, is gonna have the pressurized fluid. And if all goes well, it's not gonna go everywhere. So let's go ahead and see what happens. There we go. And that is exactly why we have another line, flexible line hooked up to this, because if I didn't, that fluid would have shot back and covered all this, uh, this front cradle right here, this front part of the frame and soaked it. So this isn't the pressure feed line from the transmission, this is actually the return side. And uh, this is gonna be the line that we actually are gonna be using for, um, for our flush procedure. So I'm gonna go ahead and kinda, of, and, and you can kinda of see that I quickly started up, I didn't let it run for a very long time. This is just to, again to see which one's gonna be the return and which one's gonna be the supply. Okay, what I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna walk you through the actual procedure for flushing it. And again, this is a, the older unconventional method to where we're actually just gonna drain it directly into a bucket and then we're gonna to have to pump fluid in uh, using a separate standalone unit into the actual transmission fill port. This method, will work just fine. You have to be a little bit more careful. Um, it does take a little bit longer. If you have a transmission flush machine, it's a lot easier, it's a lot quicker, but again, those are several thousand dollars. Every shop may not have it, but again, most dealerships are gonna have the equipment to do this quickly on here. That way you can be more efficient, but I'm just showing you the older method of what you'd have to actually do. So, what, I'm, what we've already established is this is gonna be our feed line from the transmission. This is actually, uh, after it's been through the well technically this is going to be the return going back into the transmission but uh, this is going to be the pressurized side and this is going to be the side that again is going to go back into the transmission so this line right here is going to direct that fluid into a little catch pan right here and what I'm going to do is what you need to be careful about is you want to you don't want to take out too much fluid so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drain it into this bucket right here and then after uh, probably about, I don't know, 30 seconds to a minute. I'll shut the vehicle off. I'm gonna pour the fluid into this container right here, and it has, again, these little graduations right here letting me know how much fluid is actually being, uh, or how much fluid is that we're gonna be taking out of the transmission. Now, this is another reason why I wanna get the vehicle level, because you can see our driveway, it's much higher over here versus that. Whereas if the vehicle is level, well, it's going to affect where the fluid level is going to be. So that's the if the overflow tube was back here and we were checking our funnel fluid level, um, you may think you're good, but then whenever the vehicle's on the level surface, see how that fluid actually uh, the level increased in the back whenever I actually made this container level. Um, you're going to actually have an overfill transmission, and then again, if your overflow plug was up here. And you set the fluid level relative to that, but then whenever the vehicle's leveled, your fluid will actually be underneath specification. So that's another reason why you want to make sure you have the vehicle level before you actually set the uh, set the final fluid level. So we're gonna go walk back here, and I'll show you the setup we have in the back. Ugh. So right here we have a fluid exchanger unit. This is actually the this is a mighty vac unit. And what it can do is it can uh, send fluid or pump fluid into uh, it doesn't matter, in this case we're using it to fill uh, the transmission up, but you can use it to, uh, you can use it to add differential fluid. If you're doing a service like that, you can use it to add engine oil, you can use it to add brake fluid. And then the cool thing about this is this valve right here, right now it's in pressure mode, so whenever I'm pushing down on this handle, this pressurized fluid, well let's follow this back real quick, this fluid, and this would, what this would be something similar you'd use for the uh, just a regular transmission drain and fill. So you can see I have that hose going into our fill port right there, and that's going to that's going to be where transmission fluid is going to be pumped into. But this tool has the ability to, if I just flip the switch right here and 
pump this, it can actually pull a vacuum and evacuate fluid. So this is actually very beneficial if you accidentally overfill the transmission or engine or differential. It can be a quick way for actually siphoning the oil out. And um, you can actually do, uh, I've heard of people using this to actually do an oil change on the vehicle itself without actually pulling the drain plug. And that'd be for something like European vehicles. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk you through the procedure of what you need to be careful of whenever you perform a transmission flush. And again, if you're using the machine, you don't have to really worry about this. But the thing to keep in mind is as the vehicle is running, anytime the engine's running, you know that the torque converter is spinning with the engine and that in turn is going to be uh, operating the transmission pump and because of the fact that we let's go walk back up here again remember because of the fact that we have this line disconnected it's going to be pumping out fluid from the transmission and that's because again pressurized fluid from the pump is going to be coming out of here but it's not going back to the transmission so the whole time the fluid level within the transmission is dropping so you want to be careful and not let the engine run too too long on here it's okay if the fluid level drops a little bit what I'm going to do is, again, uh, I'm going to let it run for, again, not too long, maybe like 30 seconds. I'm going to shut it off, and I'm going to go back to this little pump assembly right here. I'm going to actually fill and compensate and add a bit more fluid to the transmission pan. Start it up again, let it cycle through, and we're going to just see all the... And basically what you're going to do is... I've got about, usually a flush, they'll give you about 10 to 12 quarts of fluid. That's about 3 gallons. So what I like to do is I'll flush out about two, two and a half gallons from this. And again, I know how much it's going to come out because I'm going to be comparing it whenever I'm adding that fluid to this tank right here. We're starting out at the two mark and I know that I'm going to, once I get to about the four, four and a half mark, I'm not going to go any further. I'm going to drain about, or flush two, two and a half gallons out of there. And then I'll use the remaining half a gallon or, uh, two to four quarts of fluid I usually like to have in reserve to set the final fluid level and usually whenever this fluid coming out was pretty nasty but usually you know whenever it, you're pretty close to finished is whenever the fluid starts coming out fairly clean and at that point that's where I'll shut it off um, I'll hook the lines back up then I'll let the trans usually if you're doing this in the summertime you're gonna have to let the transmission cool down before you set the final fluid level well again that all depends on the temperature range that you're actually setting the fluid level um, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and walk you through, see how to do this. And the, the main thing is you want to be careful and not let the fluid level, don't let the engine run too long and let the fluid level drop too much inside of that transmission. So it's okay to let it run for a little bit. But again, the whole time you're not shifting any gears. We're just leaving it alone, letting it pump out some fluid. And then we're going to compensate by adding uh, some fluid. So let's go ahead and start it up. All right, so what I'm doing, I'm gonna go ahead and start it up. We're gonna go back quickly. You can see that fluid condition's pretty bad. So we'll let that drain for a little bit. Not too, too long though. Man, that's pretty good for me. And again, normally, I've shut this off. And you can see our fluid level slowing to a trickle. And again, hopefully y'all can kind of see that. It's kind of, it's pretty dark, so it's probably never been serviced on this. So what I'm gonna do, and by the way, it's okay to leave, well granted, it depends on where your overflow plug is. But let's go back up here. There we go. So you can see that fluid, no granted, this is a little bit of fluids coming out. That's just from the pumping process, that's okay. Um, also, something to be aware of, whenever you're running these lines, be careful because this exhaust is going to get hot and this is plastic, so it's going to melt through that. So just be careful how you're routing these. Um, but yeah, it's okay in this case to leave the overflow plug, or not the overflow, sorry, the fill plug, it's okay to leave that out whenever the engine's running. In this case, obviously don't let the vehicle go, uh, but this isn't going to be pressurized right here. So pressurized fluid isn't going to be coming out of here. So I leave that out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to compensate. We know that some fluid is drained out of there. So what I'm going to do is, let me set this up right here. Yeah, good enough. So it's going to be kind of out of frame, but basically what I'm doing is I'm compensating for the fluid loss. 
and I'm adding fluid inside the transmission making sure and again right now it's a little bit of guesswork it's okay if you overfill I'd much rather have a transmission that's overfilled right now before we set the final fluid level versus one that's underfilled because again we still have rotating components in there we want to make sure they're properly lubricated so again it's okay if you overfill it a little bit right now uh, I'm actually going to talk about why whenever you set the fluid level why you actually want to have it why it's beneficial to have it slightly overfilled versus underfilled and that has to do with uh, trying to scramble and get everything ready but I'll, I'll talk about that later. So right now I'm just pumping in some transmission fluid. And on this one, let me see if y'all can see that. You can see the fluid level we started up right here, and it goes down fairly quickly. Even though this is a hand pump system, uh, one that's not pressurized via shop air, it's still being, uh, it's still pumping in the fluid fairly quickly on there. So this is another disadvantage is yeah, a little bit of fluid is spilling out of there and that's because this is literally just a hose feeding into there and so the downside is well it's not a perfect seal so some of that fluid is going to kind of leak down the hose and you're going to get a little bit of fluid leaking down there it's not too bad but if you're actually working at a dealership a lot of times they'll just have a threaded adapter with an o-ring prevents this from happening so uh just a little bit of fluid leaking out of there it's not a huge deal what i'm going to do to try and mitigate that i'm going to put a little rag right there and we come back and again, come back with brake cleaner, clean this up anyway. So, so now we've got some fluid in there and we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing. We're gonna start it up, go back. Again, fluid's pretty nasty right now. We're gonna let it run for a little bit. Usually what I like to do is see how I suck my finger in there. I'm just checking what the fluid color, the condition looks like. Uh, it's good enough. You can see it fills it up pretty quickly. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut this off. So now what I'm gonna do is and you can see the fluid starting to become a little clear. What I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to take the fluid that's drained into here. I'm going to pour it into this container. And we should be pretty close to, again, I'm, I'm going for the, uh, our baseline's at about two. You can see whenever I actually hold the container level, it lines up with two. And I'm going to shoot for about the four gallon mark before I stop this. And then I'm going to actually set the final fluid level procedure. So we're going to go ahead and see how much has come out of there. Okay, so one thing I want to show you real quick, if I hold this level, we're at about three and a quarter gallons right here that have come out so far from the, oh no, sorry, because <laughs> our baseline was at two. So we're at, so the level now is at three and a quarter, which means we've taken about one and a quarter uh, gallons have been removed from this transmission. Now again, we're gonna go up until we're about, at about the four gallon mark, which means we've taken, we'll try to take about two gallons coming out of here and you already kind of saw the condition of the transmission fluid coming out it's starting to kind of clear up it's looking a lot better so i'm going to take out just a little bit more and then i'll uh meet back with you guys in a second oh and by the way that uh that odd sound you heard earlier i've off camera i pumped this up and pressurized a little bit more well the fluid whenever i walked away it was right here and just the residual pressure within the tank uh, ended up coming out so you heard all that gurgling coming out of there it was just pumping air out so I'm gonna have to actually add a bit more fluid to this whenever I get to my final inspection procedure anyway so again I'll do all this off camera it's more of the same start the engine up I've already compensated for the again the fluid that we have taken out of the transmission and so far let's see if I can see us and liters what is it I can't remember off the top of my head I've slept since then but uh, I've compensated for the amount of fluid that's been lost in the transmission. I've added that. I'm going to take a bit more fluid out of there and then we'll come back and button everything up and then we'll go to the final uh, inspection procedure. Let's go ahead and bring you up to speed on what I've taken care of. So the front end's all buttoned up. We've got the hose uh, reinstalled back in its location, put the hose clamp back on, clean the area off so we're good to go on there. And what we ended up with is, and again we're just looking at the money back unit where we're using to actually uh, install fluid into the transmission or pump fluid into there. 
Uh, we've taken out about, I got it to about that four gallon mark on our, well here, I'll walk over and show you. So you see right now, we've take, we're at our four gallon mark right here. We've taken, we started at the two, so we've taken just under two gallons out of this transmission. So again, the fluid that was coming out, it was off camera, I was looking at it. Fluid conditions started coming out pretty clean. And again, I don't want to go the full, uh, usually, and again, I take out about two, two and a half gallons, because I want to have a little bit of fluid left over to compensate if the fluid level was set too low originally. And again, that's what the uh, transmission flush machines won't tell you, won't give you the exact uh, fluid level of the vehicle. It's only taking out and putting in the exact amount, uh, or it's taking out, for instance, let's just say you take two and a half gallons out, well, it's going to put two and a half gallons back in, ideally. And the to get from a personal experience, the uh, transmission pumps or the fluid exchange units we had at our shop tended to be a little inaccurate, and you always want to check the final fluid level anyway. So again, don't just go off of that. You're, you're assuming a lot by whatever fluid's coming out. Uh, you're assuming that the exact amount of fluid is going to go back in, which that may, that may not be the case. Maybe you've removed three gallons of fluid and you only put back two and a half in. So again, you always want to check the final fluid level. You don't know if the fluid was originally set correctly whenever the vehicle came into the shop. But uh, we've taken out about two gallons from the vehicle. And this is why it's helpful to know your conversions. I had to uh, look it up myself to remember. But yeah, um, one gallon is about 3.8 liters. I've put in about eight liters, which comes out to just over two gallons on this vehicle. And what I've done is I've added about two additional quarts on here to compensate in case the fluid level is a little low. It shouldn't be too, too bad. And what I'm going to do is walk you through the actual procedure for doing our final fluid level inspection and adjustment if necessary, which it probably is going to be necessary. And again, the way I'm showing you here, you don't have to go through this whole thing if you have, if you actually have the benefit of using, or if, if your shop actually has the proper fluid exchange unit. It's going to be a lot less work, but this is just showing you um, an old school way of doing it. Still works, you just have to take a couple extra steps while doing this. So, and I hit my head, that's awesome. <laughs> so. Again, there's our feed pipe coming from the pump. That's going to, again, that's where we're going to fill the transmission fluid on this particular model. Some of them can be on the side of the transmission itself. Some of them you have to fill it from the bottom. Again, it just depends. Okay, so again, during a normal drain and fill service on this particular model transmission, there's our drain plug. Pull it out. Install a new crush washer. Uh, wait for all the fluid to drain out until it slows to a trickle. Reinstall it, torque it down, you're good to go. So, and then this is going to be our overflow plug right here. Now, what I've done off camera is I've actually um, loosened this a little bit. So, and the reason for that, and again, I've loosened it just enough to where the fluid is not going to be dripping down. It's fine. But I basically want to be ready to go that as soon as that temperature within the transmission gets to its proper operating range, all I have to do is come under here, unscrew this real quick, set the fluid level because again the whole time the transmission fluid temperature is going to be increasing you don't want to go outside of that range so you have this narrow window to set your fluid temperature and i'm going to kind of walk you through what we're going to be doing on this oh and also you can see right here i have my crush washer ready to go and so this crush washer it's a little hard to see but see how the top section is kind of rounded and the bottom one is flat so this is actually supposed to go towards the top of the pan and get crushed into position. And the flat side is going to go against the bolt. So just remember that. Rounded part towards the pan, the flat side towards the bolt. The top, the top portion is actually what crushes against the pan and actually creates a proper seal. So make sure you have the new one ready to go. Okay, so right now what I have is that I have the VCI unit plugged into our OBD2 connection, our DLC connector. doesn't matter what you call it. And remember, this is just the interface unit. It's going to... Uh, relay via Bluetooth uh, whatever information is being pulled from the vehicle. It's going to relay that information via the Bluetooth signal and that's just going to go to our scanner right here. So Alright, so I already have this set up to where, the, and again, what you're going to do is hook up the scan tool to the vehicle you're going to, again, connect to the vehicle like you normally would, and you're going to access the, on this particular scanner, 
uh, you're going to access the ECT module. That's the electronically controlled transmission module. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to live data. Now what we're going to look for, now remember, to set the final transmission flue level, it needs to be within a specific temperature range. In this one, it's going to be between 97 and 115 degrees Fahrenheit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll. It's kind of hard for it to scroll through these gloves. And I'm going to look for... I may have already passed it, actually. Let me see. Oh, yeah, I did. Yeah. So right here, AT oil temperature 1, AT oil temperature 2. Now you can see, here's our current temperature from uh, just doing the flush right there. And whenever you're doing this in the summertime, man, those temperatures climb incredibly fast. So that's why, that's why you have to be ready to go to set the final fluid level. So that's why I'm cutting out all the unnecessary steps, because as soon as it hits, and it's sort of that similar thing, if you have a torque spec between, let's just say you're torquing down a bolt and it gives you like 62 to 80 foot-pounds, as long as you're torquing within that range, it's going to provide the proper clamping force to be within specification. So in that case, I usually, again, if I had a torque between uh, 62 and 80 foot-pounds, I just set my torque wrench to like 70, 72, torque it down, and you're good to go. In this case, especially during the summertime, if our operating range, and again, what they want you to do is have the fluid temperature be between 97 and 115 degrees. At that point is where you're going to pull the overflow plug, and you're going to basically uh, set the fluid level to the correct level, and I'm going to show you how to do that whenever we crawl under there. We'll do this real time. It's going to be kind of tricky, but... Uh, basically, you're going to pull that overflow plug until the fluid that comes out slows to a trickle. And as long as you're within this temperature range of 97 to 115, you reinstall the plug, you're good to go, and it should be set properly. Now, the reason why they want you to be within a specific temperature range is keep in mind, as your fluid temperature increases, it's going to want to expand, and so the level will increase. And on this particular vehicle, they want the temperature to be between 97 and 115 degrees for you to set that proper fluid level. So, uh, a couple things to be aware of is, again, don't wait until you're about midway. Don't be like, ah, I'm going to wait till about 110 degrees just to be safe. No, pretty much once you hit 97 degrees, maybe I'll wait a degree more, 98 degrees. You want to basically go underneath the vehicle. I have my catch pan underneath there, that drain, uh, that overflow plug ready to go. Because you don't know if, whenever you unscrew that overflow plug, I have it set up to where... Um, you're not sure if fluid is going to come out or if you need to add fluid. Now, let me explain why I typically like to overfill the transmission by like half a quart or a quart. And again, this is especially true during the summertime that this temperature right here, and by the way, the temperature we're paying attention to is this one right here, AT oil temperature 1 in this case. Again, they'll specify on the vehicle. But basically, when this gets to 97, 98 degrees Fahrenheit, I'm immediately going to go under the vehicle. And, already, and that's another reason why I have that overflow plug loosened already. I just go under there and unscrew it by hand really quickly, get that fluid level set properly, and then I'm good to go. Versus having to scramble, get my tool, break it loose. Well, what if you have the wrong size tool? What if it strips out again? The whole time, this temperature is increasing. So you want to eliminate that from the equation. Um, so I just have it finger tight right now. And another reason why I uh, overfill the transmission slightly is this temperature is increasing very, very quickly. Now, I'd much rather have a scenario to where, let's just say you pull the overflow plug out, and basically the way you set the fluid level on it is you pull the overflow plug out, and the fluid level, if you have it set correctly, it's going to be a very slow trickle. And I'll probably draw this on a sheet of paper after we kind of walk through this, kind of make sure you guys truly understand this. Uh, basically, you're going to have it to where it's going to come out as a trickle of fluid, to where you know it's going to be set properly. Now, if it's underfilled, if you pull the overflow plug out and nothing comes out, the fluid level is below the overflow tube. So then you have to scramble and try to pump in fluid at a fast rate to get it set to that proper level to where it's going to start trickling out. Whereas if it's slightly above that overflow tube, it's much easier just to pull the overflow uh, plug out of there and just watch the fluid kind of drain down. It's, it's a lot easier for it to... Uh, go from a high level to a low level to get to specification versus you having to scramble for your tool and pump in enough fluid. And again, the, the whole time that you're fighting, it's basically a race against the clock on here because of the fact that uh, this temperature is going to be increasing that whole time. So it's it's much quicker, in my opinion, to actually slightly overfill it 
and that way you just pull the drain plug or the overflow plug and have it drain to its proper level again you don't want to overfill it by like a gallon but maybe like a slightly above it because again you're compensating for uh, in case your fluid exchange unit, if you're using, uh, and again, most of you guys are going to have one of those in your shop. Now you're going to compensate for maybe didn't put enough fluid back in, or maybe it was underfilled to begin with. So again, I always like to overfill it slightly. That way I'm not trying to race and, uh, try to get this thing filled up to specification while making sure this thing doesn't get over its temperature range. So anyway, what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and again, I've got everything buttoned up. I have my, uh, fluid pump ready to go into the side of the transmission. I've already added a bit of fluid to where I think it's, I've overcompensated a little bit. We're gonna go ahead and start this up. Again, the whole time, the vehicle, the transmission needs to be, or the vehicle needs to be on a level surface. And the vehicle needs to be in park or neutral. So right now I have it in park and it's a, eh, it's, it's a cool-ish day. But even still, the transmission fluid should get up to temperature fairly quickly. So we're going to kind of sit here and watch what happens. So you can see it dropped a little bit, and that's just because the cool fluid's being circulated throughout there. But then you should start to see this temperature increase. Again, we're paying attention to AT temperature 1. It should specify in the repair manual which one you're going to pay attention to. So while we're waiting, uh, let's go ahead and walk around. Oh, also another thing, I've left the uh, the splash shield under here, I've left that off because you always want to double check your work and make sure that this is our hose that we took off initially. I put the clamp back in its original spot and I just want to make sure that no fluid is leaking out of there and it looks pretty good to me. So again, I always like to leave stuff off to double check myself. So get in that habit of doing that. Don't be afraid to double check your work. Now we're going to come under here. And what I'm concerned about is, I want to make sure, again, keep in mind that this hose hasn't moved and it's not touching the exhaust, so we're good right there. And again, I have it ready to go just in case I do need to add fluid. And what we're going to do, you can see how the fluid's kind of dripping out. Well, that's because it's just finger tight. So this is going to be our overflow plug that we're going to pull whenever our transmission gets to that proper temperature range. Now what we can do, yeah, it's a lot easier with the lift, but since this is a Bluetooth connection, we can just take the scanner out the vehicle. There's your scanner. So right now we're at about close to 91 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're just gonna kind of chill out and relax until it gets to that 97 to 115. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull that overflow plug I'm gonna explain what we're gonna be watching for. And again, the whole time, it's gonna be something that's gonna happen fairly quickly. So, I have my crushed washer ready to go. I have to swap that out. Oh, one more thing. Uh, depending on the vehicle you have, sometimes, and I'm speaking from experience, at least with Toyota's vehicles, Toyota and Lexus, they have a little control valve on the side right here, if you have one with like a towing package, and you have to actually push a plunger in and have that valve uh, remain open. Because uh, if you don't do that, the fluid level, basically that valve controls when fluid's gonna go through that cooler unit, and you need to make sure you have that valve pressed in, otherwise your fluid level won't be accurate whenever you set it. So, just something to be aware of on here. Okay, so you can see that our temperatures now we're at 97.16 degrees Fahrenheit, so now we are technically within our range to set our proper fluid level. So, I do have a bit of time, because this is, again, if this was in the summertime, that temperature would be increasing a lot more, but I have a little bit of, a uh, little bit of, a uh, what's the word, a little bit of leeway or some time before things go out of specification for setting our fluid temperature uh, level, or for setting our fluid level based off this temperature. Uh, and again, the reason why you have two temperatures is there's not just one thermistor in this transmission. They can have two thermistors in different locations. It just lets the control module know uh, the temperatures throughout the transmission. So again, you want to make sure you're looking at the correct uh, automatic transmission fluid temperature whenever you're setting this. So, now what I'm going to do is we are now within our proper temperature range. Now I'm going to go to my overflow plug. 
and I'm gonna pull this plug out and we'll see what happens. So now you can see the fluid level's coming out fairly quickly. Right now what I'm doing off camera is I'm pulling the old crush washer off, getting the new one installed in the correct orientation. Let me see if I can show you all that. So the rounded portion goes towards the top, the flat section goes down there. Now what you can see is, see how the amount of fluid level, or see how the fluid's kind of slowing down, starting to come out to a trickle? Well, again, I expected that. I overfilled it by maybe about half a quart. So now, and again, this, this will never stop flowing right here. That's because the fluid level is always increasing from the heat expansion. So right when it gets to this point where it's kind of slowed down to a trickle, that's where I know the fluid level is set properly. I'm going to take my overflow plug. I'm going to reinstall it like this. Snug it. Get my tool. Make sure this is an Allen head or socket head cap screw. doesn't matter. They're both the same thing. But make sure it's fully seated in place because you know, these are very easy to strip out. So again, all I'm doing is I'm snugging this down and then I'm gonna do my final torque off screen. And of course, I'm gonna take my, uh, my fill tool, I'm gonna to take this out of there, put the uh, fill plug back in, snug it up, torque it down, and that's it. That's how you know the fluid level set properly. And again, what, I'll, what I'm gonna do after this is uh, draw a picture to show you, make sure you guys really understand what's happening, why that fluid level initially was coming out in a stream, then it kind of slowed down in a trickle, and why that actually sets the fluid level on these. And you can see, I go back to my scanner, and we're still within our operating temperature range. We're at 99 degrees Fahrenheit, just reached 100. Um, and so we're still within that 97 to 115 degree Fahrenheit uh, temperature window to set the fluid level correctly on this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shut the vehicle off, torque everything down and the last thing y'all need to do is test drive the vehicle and make sure again everything is shifting properly that you don't have any issues with that everything's shifting smooth and and uh we'll kind of debrief after that but yeah that's basically that's basically they're all there is to it it's not too bad and of course i'm gonna come back here spread out the brake cleaner clean up my work make it look nice so that's all there is to it guys so i just got back from the test drive Everything's shifting properly, didn't notice anything unusual, double check for any leaks, and again, that's stuff you guys should be doing, or get in the habit of doing on your own, is always double check your work, even after you finish everything, even when I would, uh, even when I was still in the field, I'd drive the vehicle for a few miles, make sure again everything's shifting properly, brought the vehicle back in, just double check everything, make sure nothing's leaking, and then sign off on it, you're good to go, you get paid, and you don't have to worry about it coming back. If it does come back, then you know that 99% of the time, if you've done all that, it's not going to be something you did. So, again, that's just to sort of take a little bit of pride in your work, make sure you don't have any comebacks, and really, you know, make a name for yourself. Ultimately, customers are going to see that, and they're going to recognize that, and they bring the vehicle back to you for you to work on, versus some other incompetent asshole who overcharges them and does crappy work. But, anyway, uh, what I want to show you here is my sweet artistic skills. And sort of, uh, I was talking about how I was going to explain what we're looking at, or or to sort of clarify what we were doing out there, just to make sure you guys actually understand uh, what's going on. And this was mentioned in the, uh, the PowerPoint presentations as well, but again, I want to just sort of clarify and make sure that you guys understand what's happening. So, so right now what we're looking at here is just a little side profile view of the transmission pan assembly or the sump is what we're looking at here and well on the on this particular one we had a drain plug on the back side right here so this is our drain plug so during a normal transmission service again you pull this plug out then up into the pan well it threads into this uh, it's just a little threaded section right here the bolt actually threads up past there. There's all your threads. Pull it out. Fluid drains out of there. Not a, again, that's pretty common. It's, it's just like an oil pan where you're doing a drain and fill. So there's the drain plug. And then up front, we have, towards the front on this one, we have our overflow plug right here. So we have our overflow plug. 
And then let me draw a bit more of the transmission itself. Up here we have a little tail shaft housing, then here's the actual transmission itself. I'm not going to draw the rest of it. And then on this one up here we had our hexagonal. This was our fill plug up top. So whenever we unbolted it, that's where we had the line coming into it and actually uh, pumping in transmission fluid. So whenever I would actually pressurize it or start filling it, transmission fluid is going to come up through here. Remember, there's no high pressure on this side of the system right here. This is all going to be low pressure, or it's going to be splash lubrication back here in the tail shaft housing. We're not worrying about any of the clutch packs or messing with any ports like that. So whenever you pump in fluid, well, it's naturally gravity is going to pull it down and it's eventually going to return back into the pan right here, right? Okay, so let's talk more about the overflow plug right here. Well, the overflow plug, you take it out, it looks like a normal, it looks identical to the drain plug bolt. However, there's a tube that comes up about, and it's hard to draw sideways by the way, we'll have like, we'll say the overflow tube comes up about that high. Now the tube is hollow, if we look at the side profile of it, it's hollow. Now the reason why they have that is if the engine, if we start up the engine everything is just starting to uh, warm up and you pull the overflow plug out, nothing would actually come out if the fluid level was set properly. And that's because whenever the transmission uh, cools down and the transmission fluid cools down as well, well remember that as fluid heats up, it's going to want to expand. And since there's plenty of room for it to move around, well, what's going to happen is you start out with like a fluid level like this. So let's just say this is our transmission fluid level. And again, this is another reason why it's very important and critical to have this to do your final fluid level adjustment. Check an adjustment point at in between the specified temperature range, which in this case was 97 to 115 degrees Fahrenheit. So between there and there, once you hit 97, up until 115 degrees Fahrenheit, this is where you're going to set the final fluid level. So if it was like 60 degrees out, and you start the engine up, you pull the overflow plug out, this fluid has not heated up to the point where it's going to reach the top of this overflow plug. So you can actually pull this out while the engine's running, the transmission's again below this operating temperature range, and you shouldn't see any fluid come out. Now what we were doing is, we took out, what was it, about two, two gallons, a little over that. Well. I pumped in about two gallons and then I actually overfilled it by maybe half a quart. And again, I did a lot of assuming. I was assuming that the fluid that I took out and then put back in, uh, I'm assuming that the fluid, whenever whenever the vehicle I first started working on it, I'm assuming that the fluid level was set correctly from the factory and that no one else had worked on it. But again, that's a big assumption. So that's why I overfilled it a little bit just to compensate and make it easier for that final uh, fluid adjustment procedure, what I mentioned in the video. The reason why you don't have to try and scramble to the pump and try to pump in more fluid while this temperature is increasing. Well, we don't want to do that. So, what happened is, uh, I set the, the initial fluid level before setting the specification, was like right here. So it's actually, I'm just making it up in this picture, let's say it was like an inch above where it should be. We actually overfilled it a little bit. But that's okay. So with the scan tool, crank over the engine. Again, everything's buttoned up. This fill plug I leave out just in case I need to add more fluid. So you all saw whenever it got to about 97, 98 degrees Fahrenheit, I had already loosened this overflow plug. It was just finger tight to where I just crawled under there, undid the overflow plug, and see how the fluid level is above that little overflow tube right there? So whenever I pull the overflow plug out, well, the fluid is now going to be able to drain out through there, which is why we saw a fairly heavy stream initially. But then what happened is you saw the stream, again, it was flowing fairly significantly out there. But then what you saw is after about, I don't know, 10, 15 seconds, you saw that this flow coming out of this part right here eventually started reducing down to just a trickle and that's because 
the fluid level is now pretty much aligned with the overflow tube right there and that's why that flow initially went from a again fairly significant or heavy flow and then it reduced once that fluid level reached or got uh, pretty much it evened up or it leveled up with where this overflow tube is and that's why again you saw that fluid level eventually slowed to a trickle now the reason why the fluid flow never stops is keep in mind that this temperature right here is constantly increasing so the fluid down here is wanting to expand and that's why the level is wanting to increase which is why you'll never see this completely stop so you never want to just wait until that fluid level stops you want it to where it's just coming out as a slow trickle then you know that the fluid level is pretty much set up even with this overflow tube then you take your overflow plug put the new crush washer on there thread it back in tighten it up you're good to go now for certain transmissions they're not always going to have two plugs sometimes you won't even have a separate drain plug you'll have an overflow plug slash drain plug as well now if you drain if you just pull this fluid if you just pull this drain plug out of there you're maybe you're only going to get like half a quart that's because whenever the engine shuts off and all the fluid returns to the pan well yeah the fluid level is initially going to be a little bit high but then you have to worry about everything from here and below not being drained so there's a tool that you can actually will come up through here and kind of hook around and you can actually siphon out uh, a lot of your fluid from within the transmission that's one way to do it and then you would actually inject up fluid through the overflow tube right here and add fluid to the system that way so it's a bit different how they do how they do things sometimes but again depends on the manufacturer uh, so hopefully this makes a little bit of sense and that kind of clarifies what we talked about and like I said we I believe it was the first section of the PowerPoints that we actually talked about how this works but now you can actually visually see what happens and get a better idea of how to actually do this procedure on your own and like I said for just a drain and fill you just worry about draining the fluid out, setting it to that proper temperature specification, and then pull the overflow plug out, wait till the fluid level drops, slows to a trickle, tighten it up, you're good to go. Uh, to give you an idea how much you should charge for this depends on the shop, but do not charge them the same, uh, or don't quote them the same price like you would a normal transmission service, because it's not. Now you have to get a scan tool and check the temperature. So to give you an idea, like a normal drain and fill, a lot of times, or, uh, the shop I used to work at charged half an hour, and that's for your typical, again, dipstick, checking the fluid level, not a big deal. But for something like this, for a drain and fill on this, it should be at least an hour of labor you charge for that, and that's because you're dealing with temperature range. If you're doing a flush with this system, it should be the two-hour job, and that's with the machine, not with the draining into a bucket like I showed you. You're actually going to have proper equipment. Well, if you don't, then you can use the bucket method you just have to kind of be a little bit careful about that so yeah that's about everything on here and not too bad just need to get a little practice doing it yourselves and yeah that's about it